This is the rebuilding episode, the episode where I come back. In the last episode, I was reminded of the famous Mike Tyson quote, where he says, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And well, in the last episode, I got punched in the mouth, but here I am ready to come back. I got my brand new heating element, came in the mail, and now I have to get that first installed into my kiln. While my kiln has been out of commission, I have been creating all the mugs again. And after the kiln is fixed, these are gonna be fired and then reglazed, and I will be back in business. And real quick, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who has commented and liked my last video. That's been very encouraging to me. And people say that YouTube is a terrible place, but everyone who has commented has proven to me that it's a great place and a lot of good can happen here. So thank you for that. Why did the top element fail? I think it failed because I bought the cheap element, but not this time. This time I spent a lot more money and I bought the name brand element. And now I am going to install that. I have all the new elements installed, everything is back together, and I really hope this works. Let's try it. And now we wait. Okay, so the kiln has been on high for about an hour now. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, that, that's what I want evenly glowing elements <sighs> the elements are fixed now that the kiln is repaired i know that everything is good i can wait for these mugs to fully dry out and then i will put them into the kiln for the bisque firing i will explain what that means and i'll explain what my big mistake was shortly after many days in very humid weather these are finally dry and now i'm going to load them into the kiln All of these mugs have come out of the kiln for the initial, what's called a bisque firing. Can we have a little bit of a school class? Can I, can I explain to you what happened and what the big mistake was? Let me explain to you what happened. I'm sorry this is low tech. I'm not one of those cool YouTubers with cool infographics, but the low temperature settings have an O in front of it, okay? And they count down until you get to a single digit number and then it counts up with cone 10 being the hottest. Now, I have fired everything at a cone six, the bisque firing, the initial firing, and the glaze firing, which is really, really hot. Take a look at that, okay? That's a cone six, 2,232 degrees, okay? That was a big mistake. What I was supposed to do was fire it less, a cone 04, 1,940 degrees. That is almost a 300 degree difference. Now you can see the color. This is more pinkish almost, and this is more tannish, and this is definitely denser and harder and less porous, okay? How did I make this mistake? As some of you know, I teach ceramics at high school, okay? And at our high school, everything we do is low fire. Our clay is low fire and our glaze is low fire. So we just throw everything into one kiln and it all works out perfectly, everything is beautiful. The glazes I bought, however, are high fire glazes. And with everything else starting this business, I did not think about the temperature a lot. I just knew that my glazes were high fire, and so I did the initial bisque firing at the same high fire. That was a mistake, because the ceramic was not porous, and the glaze did not seep into this. 
And I'm, I'm gonna show you an experiment right now, okay? Let me show you what I did. So here's the low fire bisqueware, and there's the accidental high fire one. Let me show you what it looks like when I dip it into the glaze. Okay. Now I'm gonna let this try to dry out. Now watch this. With the lower fire, the glaze absorbs right into this. Check this out. And if you watch these, I'll speed it up. You'll see, you'll see this one, the low fire cone four dry much faster. I know it's like watching paint dry, but you can clearly see how this has lightened up because the glaze has absorbed into the clay body. This one, the glaze sits on top of the surface. It doesn't have the ability to absorb into it because it was fired at too high of a temperature. Long story short, I messed up. From now on, the initial firing, which is called the bisque firing, is gonna be done in cone 04, and then the glaze firing is done in cone six, a much higher temperature, and that is my mistake. So, I've learned a lot, and I will not make that mistake ever again. Okay, I didn't film the process, but after I glaze everything, I loaded it up, I fired it at my beautiful temperature that I have dialed in now, and youtube.com, you are here to witness the first kiln unloading of what I hope is a successful batch. Are you ready? <laughs> I think, I think, I think it's good. These two mugs, I like that. Got that one. That is, look at that. I think this one, I'm gonna call waterfall or something like that. Look at that one. That one's beautiful. Look at that one. That is beautiful. Have you seen this mug? So, here is the mugs. It's 44 mugs that are gonna go up for sale. Not quite the 50 I was expecting, but man, aren't those beautiful? What do you, what do you guys think? What do you think? It was a long, emotional journey that got me to this point. However, I am very pleased with the final product. I mean, just, just look at that. That is beautiful. Somebody's gonna get to drink coffee out of this thing every morning, and I hope that that makes their mornings better. Okay, so the next step is selling these 44 mugs. Have you seen this mug? Have you seen this mug? Look at that. You, you, somebody's gonna get to have this mug. Have you seen this mug? Look at this mug. This is a beautiful, beautiful mug. I mean, just take a look at that mug. Somebody. All right, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Be, uh, if, if it was good, maybe subscribe, I, I don't know, whatever. You guys are awesome. But thank you. Peace.